Today I have for you an unboxing from Hermes, actually two unboxings from Hermes, directly from the store, Spring Summer 2022 collection. I've had this for almost two weeks and haven't opened these up yet because I've been waiting to film and just haven't had time. So I'm very excited to get into it and I hope you are too. If you want to see what's in here, stay tuned. <music> Hi YouTube, Autumn Beckman here. Welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My channel is all about luxury living on a budget from high-end luxury handbags and small goods to the everyday luxuries of life. If that sounds interesting to you, please make sure you subscribe, click the bell notification icon to be notified when I post new videos, and be sure to like the videos that you enjoy. And one of the perks of subscribing to my channel is you get to see my community posts on your YouTube homepage where I post deals, discount codes, sales, and rare finds related to these beautiful things we love. Before I get into this, I wanna share an unboxing from Swarovski. There was a video where I talked about jewelry. That was a collab with Tanya of Bits and Bags and a few other people. I will link that video below. But in there, I showed some Lucent hoop earrings, very similar to what Cassie Thorpe has, but a different color. And I talked about why I was returning those. I have another earring unboxing to show you. I can't return these because it's past the return window. I'm gonna come closer so you can see this better. I love the new packaging from Swarovski. It's been a while since I was in the store and they've really changed things up. I like it a lot. It's very fresh and bright colors and all. And these are similar to the Lucent hoop, except they're sparkly, crystally hoops set in gold. And the reason I cannot return them is because I bought them a few months ago. My mother and I were out shopping at the mall and she wanted me to help her look for an outfit for a wedding. And then she needed some earrings to go with it. And I found these earrings that I was interested in and they looked great with the outfit that we found for her. So I said, why don't I buy these? and you can wear them to the wedding and then just get them back to me whenever. Well, it took her about a month to get them back to me, so it's past the return window if I decide that these don't work. This is the first time I'm putting them on since I tried them on in the store. They do have a little bit of weight to them, but they don't feel like they would hurt my ears wearing them all day, but I don't know, we'll see. Before I put the other one on, I wanna show you something. With the earrings, they are on a, a hinge here, so they open up, where can I show you this best? Maybe right there, they open up at the bottom and then they just snap back. They're really pretty easy to put on because of that and they feel quite secure. Oh, they do have some weight to them. This actually might hurt my ear. This, this ear is more sensitive than the other one. I can definitely feel this as soon as I put it on. I think they look better even in normal light than the Lucent ones do. Those really had to catch the light to look their best in my opinion. And these certainly look better when they catch the light and sparkle. And they have, let me take one off again. I'll give you a little spin of this. So it has crystals on the front and on this side of the inside, but then if you turn it around backwards, it's gold on the other sides. You could theoretically wear it backward and have the gold you just have to put it on backward. You could probably figure that out. And then if you look at it from the side, it's an octagon stretched out. But this ear is also a little bit sore from some of my luxury earrings I've been wearing that hurt my ears a bit. Yeah, it's not really bothering this ear, but it's bothering this one. I'm gonna wear these for the rest of the video and see how they do. I like them. And if they're still on the website, I'll link them below in case you're interested. They come in two sizes and these are the larger ones. I wanna say they were around $250. All right, now let's see what we got from Hermes. The first box in here looks like this and this is tied nice and tight where I have to undo the ribbon get it all untied and we remove the lid and ooh, we got an Hermes sticker on our tissue paper I haven't had that on some of my others lately let me see if I can get that off without ripping anything I just might Hold on. all right I got one side anyway I like to remove the stickers and put them in my planner and then inside here, we have a silk scarf. And if I grab it by the corner, let's try to do a dramatic reveal. That worked pretty well. Those are fun. I love the colors on this one. Stand way back here and hopefully I can get the whole thing in the picture and you can still hear me. This is called the Story Scarf from Hermes. And I got it in this colorway with kind of a dark brown taupey sort of background and then blues are the other dominant color and let me just lift it up a little bit as it's closer here so you can see it in a little bit more detail let me tell you just a little bit about this scarf first of all let me tell you what Hermes says about this scarf they have descriptions of most of their scarves on the listings on the websites. I was gonna say, as I'm looking this up, that I chose this colorway specifically for the darker colors that they have it in 
lighter and brighter colors than this, but I preferred this colorway. And when I first saw this scarf design, there were some things about it I wasn't crazy about, and I hadn't planned to get it, but the more I saw it, it kind of grew on me. And then at one point I saw that colorway was sold out online, so I went into the store and they had one and I was able to get it. So here is Hermes' description. British illustrator Jonathan Burton presents his second collaboration with the Maison with a design that pokes fun at our era, one where social media and self-presentation result in all kinds of means, sometimes dangerous, to impress. Perched on a snowy mountaintop, an equestrian and her comrades pose like acrobats. If one of them stumbles, the whole pyramid collapses. Despite the somewhat unsteady performance, everyone is dressed to the nines and hopes to look their best. The giraffe dons a bow tie, the turtle and the pelican picked out their best hats for the occasion, the selfie is a success, and the phone blows up with likes. Now, I'm not big on selfies, but I am, you may have noticed, a YouTuber. So that was one of the things that I really liked about the scarf and relate to with it. You can see that chick in the middle, she has a selfie stick going up here, and then her phone is right here. And you have all these animals together perched on top of each other on a rocking horse and very precariously perched on that mountain top at the very bottom. Now usually I'm drawn to scarves with animals. This certainly has that. And with plants in nature. I'm not drawn to scarves that have people on them. I'm usually kind of repelled by those. So that was one of the things I didn't like about this scarf is there's a human that's really front and center here. But like I said, the more I looked at it, the more I noticed the details in it and the story behind it, the more I liked it. Now one thing I still don't like about this scarf very much is the corners. When I buy a scarf, the corners are very important to me because I usually wear the scarf in a way where the corners are featured. So this scarf, it has butterflies in three of the corners and then hearts in this corner. I'm not a butterfly person, like I like them in real life, but in designs and pictures and things, I'm, I've never been interested. But I figure I can just fold the scarf in other ways, wear it in ways that are not the ways I usually wear scarves, and I should be able to highlight some other elements of the design and have a lot of fun with it that way. Now I'm going to fold this back up and let's see what's in the other box. And this is the scarf when I went into the store that day. This is what I went for. This other item is also in what appears to be a scarf box, right? But is it a scarf? Let's untie the ribbon and open up the box and find out. Well, this sticker does not want to cooperate like the other one did. All right, what is in here? Open this up and it is indeed another scarf. Dramatic flourish. Hermes deserves nothing less. And this is scarf number two. This is called La Celle Imaginaire, and it is an imaginary saddle. This has a few really beautiful colorways, and I'm drawn to it for some of the graphic elements, for the colors, and the patterns. Each of the four quadrants of the scarf is so different, you can get a lot of different looks out of it, depending on which way you wear it. You can see each corner is different, so you can highlight each corner and have a different look. You can have, for example, a corner that has very little detail, very graphic color blocking, or a corner that has quite a bit more detail, more pattern. This corner has more stripes, as does this one, and you even have some leopard print thrown in. This scarf has a lot of turquoise in it, and blues and yellows and browns, and I thought that would go pretty well with the wardrobe that I already have. And it's a little different with the big graphic prints, which is usually not what I'm drawn toward. Here is what Hermes has to say about this design. Emile Hermes an enlightened aesthete, A-E-S-T-H-E-T-E. -E -E. I have to look up that word, I don't know it. It's like a cross between aesthetic and athlete. A person who has or affects to have a special appreciation of art and beauty. Well, I need to know that word because that describes me. Aesthete is how to pronounce it, aesthete. We learn something new all the time on this channel, don't we? So Emile Hermes, an enlightened aesthete and tireless collector, accumulated a multitude of curiosities that are carefully preserved in the Maison's collections. Jan Batlik, not sure I'm pronouncing his name correctly, but he's the artist behind this scarf. He was inspired by these many treasures to design this new saddle. Braids, spirals, and optical illusions adorn the dynamic composition. Its numerous motifs evoke faraway lands and invite us to travel. As with all his creations, the artist has hidden a portrait of his dog, Kluska, in the design. Can you spot him? I had actually forgotten about that until I just read it 
and let me show you where that is because you won't be able to pick it out from your angle. Oh, I found it. Here's the scarf. I'm gonna pull it up so I can point to a particular part right here. Right there is his little dog. And could you tell what kind of dog he has? It's a miniature dachshund and it's black and tan like my Sebastian. I had heard that this artist does that and I have another scarf of his and I may have another one coming. I don't remember. At least I have more of his scarves on my wish list. And it makes them even more special that there are dachshunds in his scarves. It's wonderful. And I didn't realize that when I bought this. Well, that brings us to the end of today's video. Thank you so much for watching. I do appreciate it. Hope to see you back here next time, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Bye.